Hey guys, I simply wanted to learn some of the story and lore by watching this video. Comment below if you have anything to add to the 1.0 lore or anything additional to the questions that I have here. As always, if you like the video, like and subscribe. Enjoy. This video is full of cuss words. <laughs> Shut up. Alright, here we go. 19 minutes. Everybody get your feet up. Enjoy. Eorzea. A land embraced by gods and forged by heroes. The bountiful ether that flows through this lush realm has ensured the peace and prosperity of its peoples for generations. It's but loud as shit. Was never want to last. The Garlean Empire began to amass a mighty army hoping to wrest control over the realm and her resources. Yeah, like they have been doing forever. And in the year 1557 of the Sixth Astral Era, the Empire's metal-clad warriors commenced their march south. Resistance was mounted, but to little avail, and it was not long before the city-state of Alamigo fell. Okay, which we know that because they are rebuilding, right? That's what's in Northern Thailand. Sorry, that's what I meant. So Alamigo, little little Alamigo is what became after Alamigo got destroyed. But did Alamigo get destroyed in, in this? Yeah, I'm heavily wrong here. Is that the Whale Boy? No, this is uh, Midgar Somer. Alamigo is a different place entirely. Actual Alamigo is in Gear Abania. Oh. Okay, okay, so Alamigo got destroyed completely somewhere else, so the refugees relocated to northern Thanalan, where they call it Little Alamigo. It's like Chinatown, get out of here. <laughs> from the war, from this war, right? From 15 years ago? Or is it a completely, this, because this, right? Not destroyed. History fact, Alamigo used to be at war with Cordania, so the reason why Alamigo fell so easily was because the other city-states didn't, Feel a need to help. Holy shit. Okay, so Al Alamigo, though, is not destroyed. It got yoinked. Hmm. I feel like we're all learning stuff today. Got yoinked. No, it was taken over by the Garleans. Okay, so it wasn't destroyed. It was just taken over. And so then they relocated. They conquered it. Ah, so they stole it. Okay. Okay, so it's all. And that's what, that's what this happened, right? That's what this is for? Let me let me go back a little bit with that new information that I have just achieved. Dreadnought, the agri wait, wait, we we'll even further back than that. Her resources. And in the year 1557, checks out the sixth astral era. The empire's metal-clad warriors commenced their march south. Resistance was. On the map, yeah, yeah, so there's that. Here is Gridania. That's supposed to be Ish that's Ishgard and Carthus. Stroud, Mordana, Mordona. Okay. Alamigo is near Gridania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they end up relocating to northern Thanalan, which is down here. By Mordana? It is yeah, you're right, because it's by the um Northern Thanalan is Camp Drybone. Southern Thanalan is like the desert, right? Okay. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I ask too many questions, but I also like am super interested in like what's going on. So thank you guys. <laughs> Resistance was mounted, but to little avail, and it was not long before the city state of Alamigo fell. Okay. Unsatisfied with their prize. The Garleans pressed on towards the heart of Eorzea, with their colossal dreadnought, the Agrius, at the fore. The Imperial Army arrived at Silver Tear Falls, only to find Midgard Zorma, keeper of the lake, awoken from a centuries-long slumber. Nor was he alone. A fierce aerial contest ensued twixt machine and dragon, at the close of which the invincible Imperial fleet was put to rout. This would come to be known as the Battle of Silver Tear Skies. And it falls into the lake, right? 
which is why you can see it over by Mordana, because they wanted to take Mordana because it was a strategic place to take for their invasion. To add to the Gallians' woes, they found that the beast tribes native to Eorzea had somehow regained the ability to summon their long dormant gods, the Primals. Yeah, which we knew that. Lacking the means to slay these undying beings, the Empire called a halt to its planned conquest and withdrew behind the walls of Alamico. That's some nice Garuda butt shot there. And after five long years of strife, the flames of war died down, leaving only embers which smoldered quietly as the Gallians licked their wounds and the beast tribes tested the limits of their newfound power. It was thus that Aeosia so slipped into the Age of Calm, during which an uneasy peace prevailed. So, so the, the reason the primals exist is because the beast tribes felt threatened by the Garlians? So, like, the reason the primals even exist in the first place is because of the Garlians. Did I, was I hearing that correctly? Beast tribes felt threatened by the Garlians. But now, so where we are in the story, right? By man in general. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which checks out, right? Because the sylphs, they are constantly, you know, like whenever they're under threat, you know, they summon uh, Ramu. But what's crazy is that now we're worried because like this whole primal situation is growing to the point where we're worried that like man can now do this with like the Shiva um, and the Ice Heart scenario, right? And we're worried that the Garleans are going to get a hold of it, but the Garleans are the reason, part of the reason, why the primals even exist in the first place. It's crazy though, that's like a full circle here. So this, this is actually really good to watch. I'm really glad that we're watching this. The age, however, was anything but calm. In their wisdom, Eorzea's leaders established a network of guilds for the greater good of the realm. The members of these guilds were to devote themselves to no single material or martial craft, but endeavor to embrace all that they might better serve the realm's immediate need. Which is the Midlander scene that we watched, which is what they this is here. Called simply Adventurers. The Adventurers Guild. This is the history of the Adventurers Guild. It okay, sick. Not until 1572, and Balsar. Gaius Van Belsar, architect of the fall of Alamigo, was joined then by Nail Van Darnus, their legions oh. combined to form a force the like of which Eorzea had never seen. Van Darnus, that's who we saw in Coils, right? How very glib. The Garleans are only the latest addition to the threat. The Beast Tribe conflicts go back when the other races first came to Eorzea and took the tribe's land. Let's start it. Okay, so the Garleans are just kind of like the newest thing. But the Garlean, but didn't they just say that the Beast Tribes started, they started, did they just start using it more when the Garleans were here? Because that's what they were saying was that the Beast Tribes started summoning the Primals, um, at the time that the Garlean started coming. So the primals didn't really start showing up until the Garlean invasion, regardless of like the primals or the beast tribes threat from man. You got it, Omega, I believe in you. <laughs> they kind of kicked things off. Okay. A very glib, I love that, can it? But this is, so this is Van Darnus. So this is, because of what we've done in Coils, we know that Darnus was in the, they're the kind of the legion that starts the whole Bahamut Dalaman thing, right? Just based on what we know after seeing them in Coils. Okay. My source? I can't tell you. It would be a spoiler. Damn. Okay. okay. But I thought we saw them in Coils, and I thought that's what we talked about already, but I could be wrong. I think the primals existed before the Garleans, and they may have, but I just know that they were talking about like actually summoning them and using them. Source, trust me, bro. <laughs> and just as quickly as the conquest had ended, so it began anew. So the original assault on Mordana 
and Bahama and Dalamund are two totally different instances. I thought in my brain, Midgar Somer and their fleet ship being destroyed. I thought it was like that, and then immediately following that was Bahama and Dalamund. Like that was like their retaliation. So this is cool to know that they're two totally different uh, situations. To ready themselves for the coming conflict, the city states of Limsa Lominsa, Redania, and Ulda reinstated the Grand Companies organizations with executive power to call upon the sum of the Commonwealth's military and economic might. Raban, looking good. The Grand Companies, in turn, sought the aid of adventurers, knowing that they could not withstand the aggression of two armies and the emboldened beast tribes alone. So were the Grand Companies not made in 1.0? The Maelstrom Gang, yeah. <laughs> Rise up. Um, did you guys, so for anybody who played in 1.0, were the Grand Companies made, like, during gameplay during that period of time? The Grand Companies started in 1.0. Okay, but you guys didn't, like, actually, like, have to put them together or anything like that? It was a later patch. So the Grand Companies didn't 100% exist until a later patch in the game, which is what we're looking at here, right? Not at the start. Okay, so the Grand Companies were created through the game. I think that's cool, actually. I like that. It was around this time that a well-meaning scholar from the city-state of Charlien, one Louis-Soir Levelieu, bore word to Eorzea's leaders of the advent of a new threat. Wait, Louis Swan was around at 1.0? <laughs> Would that I had done so sooner. It was my belief that if the primals were suffered to remain, they would seek out and devour the realm's crystals, draining the planet of its very lifeblood, and condemning her children to a fate worse than death because of the tempering right them summoning the primals them needing the crystals to summon the primals the tempering is what's going to really mess them up he's the reason why 2.0 exists and the orzia was saved okay nice good excellent moved by my words adventurers set out to slay the primals and thereby release the hoarded ether that it might be returned to the planet. Your frit looks sick, man. I don't remember him looking that cool when we fought him in the trial. Seventh Legion Legatus Nail Vandanis envisioned a different solution to the primal dilemma. Meteor, a complex scheme employing arcane magics and lost technologies to summon the planet's lesser moon down to Eorzea with the aim of annihilating all the realm in one fell stroke. Yeah, so Nail Van Darnus is the one who actually led bringing down Dalamund, which held Bahamut into Eorzea. Nuke it! <laughs> I don't think I've watched the ARR trailer, actually. Dalamud, as the celestial body was commonly known, was discovered to be a machine launched into the planet's orbit by the lost Alagon Empire several millennia before. To aid them in tackling this new threat, the Grand Companies turned to the talents of Master Engineer Sid. and Guardian Defector Sid Garland. But while we scrambled to fathom the workings of Van Darnus's plan, its wheels were already in motion. A massive fortress dubbed Castrum Nova now stood at the heart of Eorzea, defending a transmitter which would be used to call down Dalamar. The Grand Companies independently strove to destroy the outpost, 
but each was forced to concede that no single city-state possessed sufficient strength to breach its iron walls. Holy shit. Now recognizing the futility of standing alone against such a threat, the companies put aside their differences and consolidated their forces under the banner of the Eorzean Alliance. Now, is this important because they didn't put their differences aside for Alamigo? Alamigo got absolutely destroyed. <laughs> Because they talk about it all the time in the game. They're like, we need to put our differences aside. We need to put our differences aside. But it's like, you guys always work together. I don't understand, like, what the problem is. Like, why are we, why are we freaking out about this? But if they didn't do it for Alamigo, that makes sense. Um, why they keep saying that. Thus united. Except Ishgard stayed out of this. Well, now Ishgard's having their own problems in A Realm Reborn where they're being attacked by dragons and we're just like, we're not going to help you unless you ask because they're like, we don't want your help. <laughs> so, so rip Ishgard. Because before this, the city-states were much more separate and sovereign. This is what caused them to unite. Oh, uh, okay. But there was also that issue with Gwydania and Alamigo not liking each other, and then Alamigo getting ripped off the face of the earth, and the Gar Garleans now live there. Do they still live there? I would assume so. If little Alamigo still exists, then I would assume that they still inhabit Alamigo, right? The city states began to move against the mad Magittus. Holy shit. At the behest of this new confederation, adventurers from across the realm infiltrated Castrum Novum, located the heavily guarded transmitter, and destroyed it. Nice. Alas, the White Raven took flight before they could subdue him. But then we find Van Darnus in Dalamund, and we find Louis Swa in Dalamund. Those are spoilers, I guess, for anybody who doesn't know that. Um, which maybe that doesn't happen yet. Like maybe we just that happens much later, but. <laughs> it's like. Bahamut hasn't even entered this scene yet in this video. Worse, his twisted game was still afoot. Applying ill-gotten knowledge, he activated a second signal from beneath Curthus, a signal so powerful it fractured the land, hurling vast boulders into the air where they remain suspended. Oh. Are they still in the air? I feel like we've seen floating masses and I'm like, why are these floating here? And so that's why things are floating in Karthus? They didn't know that Bahamut was inside Dalmund. Oh shit, so they're just a surprise when a dragon comes out of it. They're like, oh fuck. <laughs> is it just in Karthus that there's floating pieces of land or is it all over Eorzea? Well, like was all of Eorzea impacted or is it just Karthus? Van Darnus just wanted to crash the moon, I guess, which is why Omega said, nuke it! <laughs> yeah, it looks like that's literally all she wanted to do was, yeah bring the moon in to smash Yorzia and blow it up and that's what's happening basically but wouldn't wouldn't she also die then in one final effort to end nail's plan the alliance selected a small party of their best warriors and bid them ride sid garland's airship the enterprise 
to the floating islands of Riven Road. The floating stuff is an Alamegan thing. So did they use Alamegan technology via the beacons to bring Galliman down? Sorry, I meant Alligan, not Alame not Alamegan. I meant Alligan. The moon itself is Alligan. So this is all Alligan technology, which is what the Crystal Tower is, right? The Crystal Tower. <laughs> I know, I bet they do wish they were that advanced. This Crystal Tower is kind of the same thing, right? Being Alligan technology. Or am I wrong in thinking that as well? Guys, this is fun. I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. I thought, my, I always thought, and honestly, I thought Van Belsar was behind bringing Dalamund down. Um, and I didn't know that they didn't know that Bahamut wasn't in the moon. So this is good news to have. They were like, oh shit, there's a dragon. <laughs> the day of reckoning. As if foretold, the chosen few succeeded in slaying the White Raven. Is that how she gets sucked up into it? Into the moon? And the day went to the Alliance. Wait, there was... Wait, where was Bahama? Yay! Yay! But the celebration proved short-lived. Oh, here he comes. It soon became clear that Van Donis' death had not served to slow Dalamud's descent. Impact was imminent. The seventh Umbral Era was about to begin. So and this might be spoilers for anybody who hasn't done Coils. Dalamund was literally keeping Bahama alive, right? Egg. <laughs> right, that's, that's kind of what we learned in Coils, was that like it was literally keeping him, yeah, that's what I was going to say next, while also like imprisoning him in it, which is kind of what like Coils is doing. It's like regenerating him and putting him back together because it was meant to keep him alive at the same time, right? So, and if it was his prison, how did we not know that he was trapped in there? Can't say, damn it. Spoilers. I have too many, too many questions. An age of suffering. No course remained, save one. I haven't finished coils yet. We have the last turn of coils still to do. So I don't have all the answers from coils. I just have some of the answers. The story talks about it more in Heaven's Word? Okay, so we'll get those answers a little bit later. Sick. To perform a summoning, not unlike those practiced by the Beast Tribes, yet on a far grander scale, to seek the power of the Twelve. The price of such a deed would be great, and could have grave consequences for the planet, but the Alliance could not deny my reasoning. It was the only way. In preparation, I entreated the realm's adventurers to pray at holy monuments, in hopes that their prayers might stir the slumbering gods. I, meanwhile, proceeded to the Cartano Plains, where Dalamud was predicted to fall and began the rite. Wait, why are they having them pray? I don't understand that. Plans attempt to summon the 12 gods. You'll see it in 
CGI in the ARR trailer if we watch it. Why are they trying to summon the 12 gods? I don't understand that. I don't understand that bit. Why are we summoning the 12 gods? They're creating a different prison for Bahama. But how does the how does the prayer stop that? That's what I that's what I don't understand. To stop Dalamun from crashing. But how does the prayer do that? Oh, it's just going to show us. I just figured it would ex explain it. But th if they don't know that Bahamut's in there, how do they know? Are they just trying to stop Dalamun from crashing? That's like their main concern at the moment. But at the moment, they're just trying to stop the moon because they don't know anything about Bahamut, right? With By praying to the 12 gods. And I guess we'll see what that has to do with anything in a second. The Seventh Legion, oblivious to their fallen leader's dark intentions, had also begun gathering in central Aeor. Which was Van Darnus, right? To defend the area with their lives. They fought not knowing that victory would bring them death as assuredly as defeat. And amid the ensuing carnage, the curtain began to rise upon the seventh Umbral era. And this is what they're always referencing in the game, right? This is the Great Calamity. I just trying to stop a big thing from crashing into the nation. <laughs> okay. Okay, sick. Okay. Holy shit. The people of Eorzea could only watch in heart. Yeah, what do you do? <laughs> fragments of the falling satellite peeled away and rained down upon the land, wreaking untold devastation. Holy crap. At Cartano, both sides fought with a frenzy unmatched, neither giving the other any ground. Is that was that Van Balsar? Adventurers plied their blades till their lungs burned, chanted spells till they grew hoarse. They fought without regard for their own lives, thinking only to save Damn. those of others. Oh, wait, watch it, bro. Thanks, little Lala. <gasps> There's what's his name? That's the paladin guy. There's Sid. But it was all for naught. Overhead, the moon's skin of stone and steel disintegrated to reveal an elder primal free of his ancient prison. Holy shit. A great roar announced the completion of Dalamud's metamorphosis. You imagine? You're like involved in this fight for your life and there's this giant orb falling right coming down slowly and if it collides with the earth it's going to explode and so you're like we have to stop this from getting reaching the ground and as it gets close it freaking turns into a dragon and you're like well we tried <laughs> i think that star is getting bigger yeah <laughs> Now it has wings. Shit, what do we do? Get the chance, look at the size difference between Bahama and Deathwing. Oh, a neat comparison. Bahamut had awoken. Holy crap. The front lines dissolved as allegiances were forgotten, and both friend and foe fled as one. I bet. 
Which so this is this is so then did Van Darnis, thank you. Did Van Darnis know that Bahama was in there this whole time? No one okay, so still nobody did. So she was still just trying to bring it in to kill it, blow everything up. The moon talking to her, but she didn't really know. Okay, so the moon was talking to her. Okay. Is that revealed later? Or is that was that gonna be revealed in coils? She was pulled to it. I feel like we talked about that. But we heard her mention that like Bahama was speaking to her in coils as well. But I just thought it was because she'd like been living there for so long. So I guess there is kind of a bit of a reference to it in coils, sort of. But that just feels to me more like she's been imprisoned inside Dalamund. Because it's like remnants of Dalamund, right, is what coils are. Like they're inside Dalamund and Bahamut's being regenerated in there, right? That's kind of my understanding of what's going on. I hope that's mostly correct. Enraged after eons of duress, Bahamut vented his fiery wrath upon Aelzi. Holy fuck, dude. And despair gripped the realm. Oh my god. Yet in the midst of the darkness, there was yet light. A divine Idling. radiance punctuating. Oh, Louis Wah. Oh my god, he's huge. The manifestation of the prayers of a thousand thousand souls beseeching the twelve for one thing. Salvation. Oh, here's the prayer, okay. And for a moment, it seemed that the gods would answer. A prison of pure light formed around the raging primal and began to bleed the ether from his being. Alas, the wrath of Bahamut could not long be contained. Damn. My plan had failed. <gasps> okay, so I just saw it. So that staff that he has in his hand right now that just broke, is that what's on the painting behind Minfilia in her office? Oh my god. <laughs> my brain <laughs> the purpose of prayer changed once they saw bahamut interesting yet i could not allow those few heroes who still fought for me to pay the price of my failure so i summoned what was left of my strength and sent them into an ethereal rift there they would remain untouched by the passing of the seasons until it was safe to return to a realm reborn he said the thing you guys he said the thing <laughs> that was so cool i'm glad we i'm glad we decided to watch that together so then bahamut becomes imprisoned eventually right okay and so then coils coils really does especially after watching that video we really do need to finish doing coils um but it is so cool the story is so good even just like doing the catch-ups like this um are awesome like taking the time to do the catch-ups and stuff like this have been fantastic um i'm super excited to continue to go through this story like this it's uh it's been a lot of fun especially since we're about to go into heaven's War. i think heaven heaven's War is going to be a lot of fun uh to step into and see what's going on you know so i i think i get it i think i understand everything that's going on i think yeah, I agree. I agree. It's definitely good to know the base story. And like, it's nice to see all of that stuff that people just keep referencing and to like have that information, you know, because the game builds upon that. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I've spent so much time kind of in a realm reborn trying to like touch into as many things as possible, because I really want to make sure that when we move on from this, that we kind of have that I have everything that I need. Um, especially since like now that I know what that staff is, like it's answered so many questions that I had before. It answers like how Van Darnis got inside of Coils, how Bahamut got captured, how Louis Swa died and why he's a hero. Um, why Ali's looking for him. Um, 
because he just ran because i assume he just vanished after that like where's he been is he dead is he not dead well we assume he's dead because of bahamut which then I assume, because of the Twelve Gods, is how Hydaelyn also got involved with it. But so, like, are we not afraid that, like, doing the prayers the way that we did, that we... How did we not summon, like, our own primals if we can do that now? Like, what's changed? Louis Swall, the ultimate Giga Chat. Am I asking... Am I asking the right questions that are going to eventually be answered later? Or am I just going to drive myself insane?